Hi, this is uh, 3.2 graphs of functions, and on this section we're just basically asked to graph, uh, well not asked to graph the function, but find the domain, the range, and the x and y intercepts, and uh, maybe uh, ask some particular information about those functions. And uh, uh, there's not much going on, that's why I just began with a couple of examples, and if you can do these couple of examples you probably should are pretty good to go for this section. Uh, example one, I gave it, I gave you the function to you in terms of a, of a graph. The second one, I gave it to you in terms of a, an equation. So same situation, but the function is given to you two different ways. Um, first one is, what is the domain? So the domain, remember, is the x-coordinates. Now, a lot of people, when they see a graph, when they ask for the domain, they know it's the x-coordinates. So what they do is they start looking for ordered pairs that's kind of listed on the graph. Now you gotta understand the, the order pairs that got the, the big solid dots on the graph. Yeah, those are points on the function, but everything else in between as well, because even though this is not a solid point there, it's still part of the function. So you can't just say, well, x is negative three, negative two, zero, two, and three, because those are the x coordinates of those particular points. The, there are x coordinates all the way that starts at negative three and it ends at positive three. And it's everything in between. So there is an x coordinate of one half. It's right there, even though there's not a solid point there. So the domain is all the numbers between negative three and positive three. Now the range is the y coordinates. The range is how low does it go, so how high does it go. So it goes from negative two up to three. So that's your range. Now, what are the x-intercepts? The x-intercepts is where it crosses the x-axis. The y-intercepts are where it crosses the y-axis, or intersects at least. So, and these are easy when it's looked at the graph because all you got to do is observe. So the x-intercepts are at negative 2, 0. And there's another x-intercept at positive 2, 0. Now, what are the y-intercepts? The y-intercept is up here, 0, 3. So you can't just say three, and you can't just say negative two and positive. You've got to list them as ordered pairs, like I said on a previous lecture. So zero, three is a wider set. Now alpha three, you remember that they're asking you to evaluate the function. And what does that three mean? Well, three is your x. Remember, it's alpha of x, so that's what x is. What they're wanting you to find out is what is the y. So alpha of x, alpha of three. So they want to know what the y coordinate is when the x coordinate is three. And that's very easy to do because all you gotta do is look at the graph over at x equals three. What is the y coordinate at that point down here at negative two? So that is your output, negative two. Not too bad. Now this one right here, they give it to you in a function. The first question though is one though is does negative one two is that a point on the graph? So what they're in essence asking you to de determine is is negative one two a solution to that function? The best way to find out is just plug negative one in and see what you get. And if you get two, the answer is yes. And if you don't get two, the answer is no. So we'll plug negative one in. So put negative one squared, that's one, plus a negative one, minus two, and the answer is negative two. As you can tell, it's probably it was like a little trick question because you got that two part of it, but the answer is negative two, and this one is positive two. So they don't match. So the answer is no, it's not on the graph. And I said, well, what if x is 2? Then we'll name a point on the graph. So it's kind of like the first question asked in a little different way. So put 2 in for x and see what you get. 2 squared is 4 plus 2 minus 2. The answer is 4. So you put 2 in, you get 4 out. So what do you think? Yes, the order pair is 2 comma 4. And then the last one, I uh, see, I'm sorry, the, the third one, what is the domain? The domain is the values of x. We did this in a previous section. Okay, what is the domain of that one? You can square anything, add that number, and subtract two, and you'll get an answer. There's no fractions to mess with. There's no square roots. So there's nothing to hinder the domain at all. So it's all real numbers. Now, what is the y-intercept? The y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. And like we talked about in class, the y-intercept is found by taking the x-coordinate and setting it equal to zero. So just plugging zero into x, in other words. And if you do that, it's alpha of zero. Zero squared plus the zero minus two is negative two. So the y-intercept the is zero comma negative two. 
And then the, the x-intercept is set to y-coordinate. Remember, y-coordinate is the same as f of x. So 0 equals x squared plus x minus 2. Now, we did this from a previous section back in Chapter 2. We were able to solve equations like that. This one actually factors. It's x plus 2 times x minus 1. And x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 1. So there's a negative 2, 0 and 1, 0. Okay. A little bit later, we're going to be uh, asked to graph these, uh, these kind of functions in a little bit more detail, and, but not right now. But it's negative 2, 0, and 1, 0. Those are the intercepts for this one, and the x-intercepts and the y-intercept is 0, negative 2. There's something called the vertex we'll have to graph, and that comes a little bit later. So, but anyway, to, get, to complete this graph. So these are just little key little uh, characteristics of this function. So, but that's it.